Welcome to the tenth module in the .NET Learning Analysis series. This is the C# -sharp fundamentals part of it. In this module, we'll be talking about reusing code with methods. What are methods? Methods are those programming components in programming that lets us pass in parameters and get an output from it. Or sometimes even we don't need to get output from it. Uh, so let me just show you how that basically works in C# -sharp. So if I go into my code over here, I'll just go ahead and create a new project for this one, as we used to. I'll do a .NET new console. I'll output that into 10. We're using code with methods. Let me just zoom in into that a little bit. All right, so we have our code generated for us as normal as it would. So I'll open up the program.cs file here and I'll remove the boilerplate code. So what I need to do next is actually say, in a normal scenario, what would happen is say we wanna have, um, or let me do this. Console, that's our install purse. I'll have a console dot read line over here and I'll add in B equals on the first console dot read line. So this will get inputs from the console for me. Next thing I want to do is normal scenario I'll say in C equals A plus B. Right? And I will go ahead and output that to my console. Since we work with strings, let me do a little bit of string manipulation over here. All right, so I have it updated for me. If I actually was to go ahead and run this, I can do a .NET run set that project and then run this code over here i will normally need to put in an input so i'll say eight over here and maybe nine and then i'll get 17 as my output but what if i wanted to do this over and over again in my code how do i do this normally what i'll need to go ahead and do is abstract refactor this code over here to ensure that I'm able to do this over and over again. Now, addition looks like a very simple scenario, but think of when you're uh, working with large models and large classes and all big components, and you need to reduce code over and over again. So let me actually go ahead and do this. Oh, a good example is actually this comes with a red line. If we were to write this ourselves in C Sharp, it might actually be a long thing to write, uh, but we are able to reduce that method over and over again. And I'll show you how we can do this. So over here, uh, so what I'll do is I'll create a method over here and this is how the method looks like. Uh, so with a method you can have ones that return values back to the calling function or we can have one that don't return value. In C Sharp, the ones that do not return a value back, they are denoted with void. So we can have something like void add. So we can have in A in B. So what this means is that I'm what I have over here, this int A and int B that I have, they are called arguments or parameters that you input into the method. And then normally a method that does not return anything would be denoted by void. Like I have over here, this void keyword over here denotes a method that does not return a value. So all your computation and everything will be done inside here. If you need to print out anything, you'll have to do it inside this method here. So you can have something like console, the right line a plus b this is one way to have it yep this is one way to have it now uh i'll just put a little comment over here i'll say it does not return a volume or objects let me put it this way and then we can have one that actually returns the value. So let me actually run this 
and uh, we'll see what this looks like. So let me actually do this. Let me copy and paste this over here. Right, and let me comment this out. And what I'll do over here is that I would say, I would just call the method right and left. So I'll say add, I'll call add. Oh, now I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing this add method over here. Uh, so let me just do this. Okay, so now I can call the method right now. I can go ahead and now do a console.net run over this. Oh, I have a little bit of problem here because I'm in a console uh, application. I need to add on this with a static keyword. I'll explain the static keyword over again into access modifiers and all that. So let me just add on it with that and go ahead and run this again. So normally my program should run fine just now. So I need to give it an input. So let's say eight and say nine, just like we had the other time. And you can see we have that same output for us. Now, that computation is done inside here. We can go ahead and see how that looks like. But if you have to return a value, let's say, for example, we want to actually do that uh, printing in our class, in our own main method over here. So this is actually another method. This was predicted by the .NET SDK for us. So normally what I would do is, let me comment this out, right? And let me comment this also out. So what I'll need to do over here is go ahead and create a new method. So I'll say this one returns a value or object. And of course, I'll remember my static and I'll tell us that it returns an integer. All right, and I will give it, uh, I'll give the method a name. So I'll put it in A and in B. Those are the data types that serve as argument for it. So what I'll need to do is say return A plus B. So I could do a sort of computation in here. I can do a console write line if I want to. I can uh, log reports and do all sort of stuff inside here. But what I actually need to do is say in C equals A plus B. And then instead of having to complicate matters, I can just return C. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to complicate things for us. Uh, so I normally would just return C. Normally, if I was to write it for myself, I would just return A plus B. And off I go. So if I need to now use this in my code, I will go ahead and say int C equals, I will call the add method and input A and B into it as parameters, all right? And then I can go ahead and do my output right over here. So what happens in essence is that when it comes to the time to run this part, when it comes to time to assign a value to C, we should go into this method and do that computation for us and then return that value to the console. So let me actually go ahead and run this and let me just add one plus one together. Uh, there's a little bit of problem over here. I think I missed something. It's supposed to be INT. That's a little bit of typo from my end. Now let me go ahead and run that. And I'll need to input something. I'll do it and I will see it just works the same way. And that is how we use methods in C Sharp as simply as that. And this can go for very complex scenarios or very simple scenarios. You just decide when to uh, use it. And as we go for that, I'll actually use more complex examples, but I just want to show us how simple it is to create methods in C-Sharp. I'll see you up in the next video. Bye-bye.